Good day, my name is Delena White, Secretary General of the International World Textile Organization, and I thank ICAC and the team for the kind invitation to speak to you today. During the presentation today, I will focus on how we got here, what we need from future legislation, and how we ensure that these laws will protect our fragile ecosystem and rid consumers from the rampant greenwashing once and for all. I will also invite you to get involved in this very important process. As a design student in the 80s, we were taught to present four ranges to our retail buying managers per year. Summer one, summer two, winter one, and winter two. Soon after, Big Rita launched a concept called Quick Response, first introduced by Zara and then perfected by others like H&M and Primark. The aim was to offer look-alike products of popular high-end clothing items. New ranges had to launch every two weeks. And instead of offering quality pieces as investment buys, consumers were encouraged to purchase from a capsule offering, including a top pan jacket, uh, maybe shoes and a bag to match. In the factory, we had to rework our costing structures because Mrs. Smith did not suddenly have three times the amount of cash to spend on clothing. So as 60% of a garment's cost was taken up by the fabric, the solution was clear. Simply turn high quality wool trousers into low quality poly visco suits and add a polyester blouse to match and voila, Bob's your uncle. To reduce garment costs further, we had to turn to the second biggest cost component namely the labor rate, and countries with low labor law standards became our sourcing meccas. The first cracks in this money-making machine appeared in 2012 with the publication of Overdressed, the shockingly high cost of cheap fashion by Elizabeth Klein. And then shortly after, in 2013, the collapse of Rana Plaza building in Dhaka followed, sending shockwaves through the international community. Fingers were starting to point at the very opaque textile pipeline we've created. So inter-environmental rating schemes, such as made by, with the aim to compare environmental impact of the most commonly used fibers in the garment industry with a mission to make sustainable fashion commonplace. Great idea, surely. The retail buying manager can now apply this recipe to the buying plan for the next season and continue as before, now with a marketing message to match. Jumping to 2018, the Oxford word of the year was toxic. And according to Oxford, this word had a 45% rise in popularity during that year. In January 2019, Sir David Attenborough told the Duke of Cambridge during their talk at Davos, we are destroying the natural world and with it ourselves. We have to recognize that with every breath of air we take, every mouthful of food we take, comes from the natural world. And if we damage that natural world, we damage ourselves. We are one coherent ecosystem. Two months later, we discovered just how true his words were when we were faced with the first global pandemic in 100 years and 100% man-made. We've seen clothing and textile production double during the past 15 years, and 70% of that growth has been in the fast fashion sector, with goods being made from fossil fuel fibers using the cheapest labor rate available. The European Commission recognized the precarious position our planet finds itself in, and first published the Circular Economy Action Plan in 2020. This was followed up with a circular economy package in March of 2022, including several initiatives aimed at making sustainable products the norm in the EU, boost circular business models, and empower consumers for the green transition. 
the Commission found that many products on the EU market are produced for a short lifespan and that consumers find many labels and green claims misleading. The plan states that the Commission will also propose that companies substantiate their environmental claims using product and organizational environmental footprint methods. This is where the rubber hits the road as a recent sweep of textile websites found that more than 50% of green claims are unsubstantiated, confusing or simply untrue and greenwashing is rife in the clothing and textile world. A recent report published in Quartz magazine found more than half of the scorecards on H&M's website claimed that a piece of clothing was better for the environment when in fact it was no more sustainable than any other comparable garments made by the same company or by their competitors. Representatives from global natural fiber industries launched the Make the Label Count campaign last year with the aim to support the Commission in this important task ahead of them. PEF will be used by big retail to substantiate their green claims in the EU in future. The campaign aims to ensure sustainability claims for apparel and footwear in the EU are credible and based on scientific evidence. We currently have 22 coalition members representing silk, cashmere, moe, alpaca, cotton, wool, brands, supply chain companies and various NGOs. We've just published a white paper highlighting the gaps in the current PEF methodology and how these can be fixed. The current PEF process is now 10 years old and research has moved on tremendously during this time. This is also the first PEF where um, products of a natural origin will be compared to those of a man-made source. It has never been done before and the recipe is simply flawed. We do believe that it can be improved. To make the PEF fit for purpose, our white paper recommends that the European Commission include three new indicators, including a microplastic release, plastic waste indicator and a circularity indicator. It is time to face the elephant in the room. The current fast fashion model and our dream of a circular economy can mix as well as water can mix with oil. There is no magic fiber on this planet that can save us from the fast fashion model. We must produce less and we must produce better. As I'm recording this message, we've just celebrated Earth Overshoot Day. That day when we've used up all the biological resources that Earth regenerates during an entire year. Yet we will continue consuming resources for the next five months. We are literally living on borrowed time. Make your voice heard for the sake of the planet and for the sake of its people. Join the Make the Label Count campaign and help us to advocate for an improved PEF methodology. It is vital for members to participate in upcoming EU public consultations to ensure lawmakers receive the correct messages from their constituents. I thank you for your attention.